podcast. This podcast is proud to be part of the TalkSport Fan Network. TalkSport. Powered by fans. So, uh, good evening and welcome to another edition of the uh, Way End. Um, this evening, I am joined by Ant Northgroves, who is a member of the To Hull and Back podcast. Um, so, just ahead of our game on Tuesday evening. So, uh, welcome, Ant, and uh, thank you. Thank you for joining. Tell me a bit about your podcast and uh, what you get up to. Hi, hey, yeah. Thanks for having me on, starters. Um, yeah, no, uh, our podcast, as, 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 as it says on the label, we're a Hull City podcast, but we do things similar to this where we get opposition fans on so we are always sometimes worth a listen especially if we're playing your side or if you just quite fancy a neutral perspective obviously on how we're doing if you're taking an interest in the playoff chase or anything like that for example um but yeah we we, we just have a laugh about it we've been going to for a few years we didn't actually think that um we'd still be going at this point we didn't actually think we'd be reaching the numbers we did um it's, it's quite crazy when we think about it none of us ever had any media or podcast background so it, we're just kind of enjoying the ride um, but no, Excellent. yeah, we're 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 still going. And and I mean, fair to say, uh, Hull on a, a fantastic run at the moment. You know, pushing for uh, I think arguably one of two final playoff mm. spaces uh, as I see it in the league at the moment. Um, but uh, but doing really well. So going into the games could be a tough one, um, which we'll come on to in a, in a, in a bit. Um, but yeah, yeah. So. Um, Played you already twice, three times, in fact. This three season. times, so, yeah, uh, it's been crazy. FA Cup twice, um, and then uh, in the in the league. So, I mean, when we look at the past five games, um, it's a similar sort of story to what I've seen with, with past uh, reviews that I've done. But two wins, two losses and a draw uh, in the past five games. I will say, uh, I have counted, obviously, the FA Cup results into, into those um, but when it comes to the league, I think you know you're ahead of us as far as as wins are concerned, and you've had some some good results against Birmingham um, mm. over, over the past few occasions. Um, so uh, our last game, obviously, as I mentioned, two 0 win at St Andrews in the FA Cup, uh, which I think you know it was a, it was a tight game up at, at your place to start off with. Um, I've got to be honest, uh, I thought both teams went for it. Um, Probably a fair result on the on the on the day. Uh, both men are very good. I recall very good first half. Um, not so good second. Conceding late on in the game. It's always disappointing uh, for fans, especially those that have have travelled. But then, well, a very lacklustre game <laughs> back at St mm. Andrews afterwards. Um, typical third round FA Cup game, really. So uh, a shame. Um, but you know. Looking forward to to the league game. Uh, it's going to be a totally different occasion. Obviously, you're flying at the moment, looking to to gather more points towards remaining in that playoff spot. So, I mean, tell me tell me about your thoughts for the season. Really, I mean, what were your expectations as this season started, and how do you feel now? You know, do you think you'll get uh, one of those final spots in the in the playoffs as you get towards the end of the season? Yeah, I mean, it, we, we, when when the season first started, I feel like the the expectation, which was the realistic one, was um, top ten. I think um, it was as long as we were in the discussion for the playoffs for the majority of the season, something like that, or flirted with them, or was you know had a chance of them, had something to play for. That was a good season for us, and that, and to have sort of like a a building block to then build, uh, uh, well, to progress next season and, and try and really push on. But we seem to be ahead of schedule, and I mean, we had a we had a decent summer. With transfers, we brought in some promising players, but um, a, a few of them never really hit the heights that we expected to. You know, like Jason Lakila, he was really disappointing. Scott Twine, who we mm. thought was going to be really good, was disappointing. Uh, Ruben Vinagra was a sick note. We just never had a pit left back. Um, I mean, Matty Jacob, who came and scored against you guys in the FA Cup at home, that yeah. was his first ever home game. Like, we, we had to bring him into the side because we just had no left back, so... He's kind of emerged from that FA Cup. That's probably the one positive of the FA Cup this season was that the emergence of Matty Jacob. Um, but no, yeah, it's been a very good season. I mean, like we said, we had a fantastic... I think we got to a position where, even despite having a, a really tough, poor run over December, where we had a lot of injuries to key players, and that momentum got sort of hindered a little bit and and, and 
we still managed to find ourselves in like the top seven, eight. I don't think we've dropped any yeah. lower than eighth in, 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 in months. So I think because we came through that period where we only won like five or six games in 15 and were still in that position, the, you know, it, it got to a point in, in January where we said, look, let, let's, do you want back? I think the owner said to Rosinia, do you want back in to go for it this season? And he's gone, yeah, let's go for it. I think we can do it. And, and we had a fantastic January transfer window. I mean, some of the players we've managed to bring in this season has been <laughs> absolutely phenomenal. Like the, the pull that our owner and, and Rosinia have got um, to bring to bring players to Hull, of all places. It's, yeah, it's, it's quite something. So we're hoping that, you know, we've got enough quality on the pitch now uh, that we can keep them fit because um, that's going to be the main thing and, and mm. find a bit of consistency and sort of nail down that that one of those spots in the top six. I mean, the one thing I will say, you know, we you're obviously playing Birmingham when Wayne Rooney was was still in mm. charge. Um we won't go there in regards to what everybody thought. <laughs> but, you know, it's uh, it, it's it's gone now. You know, we've we've moved on. We're with Tony Mowbray. Unfortunately, won't be able to make that journey up to yourselves. Um, but you know, we're in good hands with with Mark Venus. And at the weekend, we had a really good game against Southampton. And for me, without poor officiating, I think we'd have walked away with with a uh, with a draw coming away from that game. Um, mm. But you know we 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 come up to yourselves now off the back of that wanting to to push on and at the end of the day we need the 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 points to get away from that that final area of of relegation you know we are now equal bottom we're only out of the bottom three on goal difference it's scary when I yeah. think about how our season started and where we are now it's it's you know polar opposites so you know we've got a lot to uh, to play for especially over the next few games. It's, Toughy against yourselves, and then we go into teams that are in and around us in the league, and so hopefully we can we can push on. But I mean, we we talk about the clubs and the games that we've had in the past, but we've also had quite an overlap, really, of of players. Um, so you know, players that spring to mind are Craig Fagan, Curtis Davis, who is you know as perfect and brilliant defender for for Birmingham, yeah. and you did well with yourselves. Um, Clayton Donaldson, you know, she turned mm. out, I believe, on a, on a couple of occasions, not many more after that, but obviously signed for a long time ago for us, was Clayton. Um, Alex Bruce. And of course, yeah. you know, from the managerial side of things, you had his, his dad there as well, and Steve, you know, did, did wonders, I think, for, for both clubs, really. Um, then uh, other players, uh, Aaron McLean, I think he was loaned, if I recall correctly, to, to Birmingham. Um, mm. Didn't really turn out too much for us. Was a good player for yourselves, uh, and then we get into to, you know some of the big boys. I mean Brian Hughes, Jean Sorrell, um, Thule Adebola, Sebastian Larson. You know to 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 name a few of us, and then some that were a little bit further back with Boas Moyel and Sona Luco, also yeah. you know, turning out for for both clubs. So we've had quite a a good overlap, and I think it's fair to say we had we've had some of the better players that that then have, have moved into yourself when we were going through our troublesome period. So, you know, I remember Curtis Davis, when he moved away from us, it was such a big loss. But he, mm. did, he did well for yourself. And and obviously Sebastian Larson as well, which I think was towards the back end of his career when he when yeah, he moved was. Himself. Same with Adebola as well. Yeah. You know, so, so I think, you know, we, we definitely saw the, the best of Adebola at, at Birmingham and we took him at the right time from, from crew. Uh, when we had him, and you know, we, he worked and, and played wonders. But you got like to say we've we've had some really good good overlaps. Um, so we're not, you know, we're, we're talking about the game on Tuesday evening, but we've mentioned some old players there. But who should we be looking out for? You know, as as we go into to this next game, and obviously you've, you've mentioned your young left back there. Um, but who else should we be looking out for? I mean, strikers, midfielders. Where's where's your threats and and where do you think you'll you'll be able to punish us? Yeah, well, I actually mentioned Matty Jacobs in his emergence. Um, he doesn't play now; he's our second choice because we signed Ryan Giles. Um, obviously, he was fantastic for Middlesbrough last season. Got twenty odd assists, I think, in the last two years from left back. So he's 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 a threat down the down the left hand side. But you know, if you'd have asked me this at the beginning of January, I'd have probably named you two or three players. But you know, most of our attacking line now, it just it's it's looking at our starting eleven. It's a bit surreal. I mean, you've got 
in the middle of the park, you've got Tyler Morton, who, who's been absolutely fantastic on loan from Liverpool this season, um, alongside, obviously, John Michael Serry, who's won the league with Fulham before, was almost going to yeah. Barcelona at some point in his career. Absolute yeah. maestro in the middle. Um, them two make it tick for us. Jacob Graves, I think, is one of, if not the best centre-back in the league at the minute. He's been absolutely fantastic and he'll be in the Premier League next season if that's with or without us. Yeah. Um, you know, then you've got, like, like we say, we've got Ryan Giles on the left-hand side. But our main threat um, and has been all season is Jaden Filagini. He's just absolutely phenomenal. I mean, he scored at your guys' ground, I think, earlier in the season. Um, he's just, he's a bag of tricks. He he works hard. He tracks back. He defends. You don't know what he's going to do. He's unpredictable. You know, he, 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 moments of magic. He can win a game single-handedly. Um, he is, it, at the minute, our biggest threat. Yeah, but obviously we've got Fabio Cavallo on loan from Liverpool as well. He won the league with Fulham as well. And we've got Anna Sorori who won the league with Burt Burnley last season. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, we've, we've got a squad littered with attacking talent. Um, you know, maybe this year could be the, the, the more physical game. So if Birmingham can try and bully us a bit, you might sort of upset the rhythm. But we've got a team that works hard and, and, and there's a lot of goal threat on that pitch from us. So, but I would say Philogene's our biggest threat at the minute. I mean, we've, I think, uh, our standout players at the present moment, you know, our fullbacks look absolutely superb. Uh, Ethan, Ethan okay. Laird, though, who signed from Manchester United, has just been, well, he's, he's been standout in terms of his attacking prowess, but also he's, he's defending and the way that he is with the fans, he just knows us, as, you know, he interacts with us and he's he's got that little bit about him that makes him loved by everyone and he has been absolutely superb over the past couple of games. I look at the midfield and actually, you know, we've scored more goals in midfield than we have across the other areas. So, Jordan James doing really well at the moment. Really yeah, standing well. out and has come into his own um, over the past few months, you know, and, and he's popping up with the odd few goals. Um, got a coach in the Osher, scored a great goal at the weekend and, you know, he, he can uh, pitch in whenever he, he needs to. And then, of course, when I look at the, the strike force, we've got Stansfield and, you know, he is he, he is just such a potent player when he's when he's in and around the box that he only needs one sniff of goal and he, he'll look to, to put it away. And he actually is he's, he's a, he's a bit of a poacher as well. So when I look at his goal against Southampton, you know, he anticipated that there could be a a knock on from uh, as there was, you know, it just cleared the defender, it just touched the head, and he just was able to run onto it uh, and put it away. So we've got opportunities there. And then also, um, Janidio Bakuna, he is he again from midfield, he's, he's popping up with the goals. And it seems to be that we have strength on for a change when we're actually coming off the, the, the bench. I think it's going to be a really, uh, a really close game, to be honest. It's going to be tough. Uh, I don't expect anything but a, a tough challenge from uh, from Rossini's team. Never have done, and I love the way that he sets it up. And in fact, you know, we all talked about the Wayne Rooney side of things when he when he came. I actually believe the the vast majority of what happened at Derby when Rooney was there and they did so well, and, and only just obviously failed to stay in the league was was because of Rossini's work. You know, I think um, yeah, hundred percent. He, he's done so well with your team, turning them around, but also bringing in these players. You know, he's got those links. He's got that ability to to spot the talent. And you've, you've got owners that are backing you as well at the moment, which is, is superb. Um, you know, when it came to it, we've got new owners at Birmingham, but they're having to still firefight the financial fair play rules. So we've been stuck in, in terms of being able to do certain things over the last window. I firmly believe things will change in the summer, but you know, first and foremost, we've got to keep ourselves in the in the league and and and, and be above seventeenth. That's where we've been for the past couple of seasons. Just want to be above seventeenth. We finished sixteenth. That that that's an improvement. Um, it's very tight in this league, though. You know, I think when you look, we talk about the playoffs and and the fact that there's multiple teams fighting for those last two spots. You look at the bottom half of the league, and it's ridiculous. I think there's there's four yeah. or five teams now that are all on equal points, and it's in and around the goal difference that's keeping them away. The difference we seem to have is we're up against teams like QPR that are having a managerial bounce. We're up against Stoke that are doing exactly the same thing, um, 
and and everybody seems to be grabbing results. I mean, who'd have thought that Leicester would lose the weekend? You know, it's mm. it's really is a a daft league, and so many things turn around the weekends. You know, we were moving up positions, then we were down positions, then we were fighting against this goal difference side of things. It was daft, so it, it's going to be a, a a tough one. So, firstly, I take it you'll be there at the game. Yeah. Um, so. Give us your ideas. We watch, watch, watch your predictions. I mean, it's always one where your head says one thing, your heart may say another. But how, how do you feel it'll go? And what's your prediction for for the game? Yeah, I, I think with Birmingham they're a bit of an anomaly because I feel like the league position leads people underestimating them a bit um, and sort of forgetting where they were under Eustace and then where Rooney left them, kind of thing. And you're in a bit of a false position. I mean, you only have to look at obviously the 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 game against Southampton and, and the game you gave them and what you probably should have got from the game to realise that we're, we're not going to have it easy. Um, I do look at the talent on our pitch and, and think that, I mean, I, I would say this if we was playing Leicester, you can go against teams now with the side that we've got and not fear anybody and and, and go into a game and, and genuinely believe that we've got enough uh, magic on that pitch to win the game. Um, whether or not, obviously, that happens and, and, and obviously when teams... I mean, we struggle against teams that sit deep. I don't know if Birmingham are going to come to us. I've not seen the style that Mowbray's, well, tried to incorporate before he's been taken unfortunately ill. But yeah. if teams try and play against us, that's what we prefer because we, we we like to suck teams into a high press by trying to play out from the back. The goalkeeper will hold onto the ball and then try and encourage your strikers to press him. We'll, we'll pop the ball in behind in the, the, the space and then utilise our pace on the wings on the counter-attack. And that's what we like to do. If you sit deep and, and and create like two banks of four or something like that, we tend to struggle to break teams down. So it'll, it'll be up to you know the the attitude of our players on the day. But I I, I I'm going to go for a, a very closely fought two one home win. And I think I mean what you've just described actually is quite interesting because when I look at the way Birmingham have played over the past couple of games, they have tended to want to break away and they're using their, their full-backs to, to, to push out. So there is always the overlap between those full-backs and, the, and the, the wingers that we've had on the pitch at the time. So I think, you know, if we come out like that, it's going to be an interesting one. It'll be, a, it'll be an open game. End to end. Yeah, I think, you know, they always are, in fact, actually, between ourselves. They're always very open and, and you know, ultimately have been close in terms of the league results as well. I think, you know, I don't think we've had many that have gone over two goals. So it's going to be it's going to be a close game. I mean, when I look at the league, and I mentioned there before, it's like, you know, so close at the bottom, but there's actually seven teams that uh, <laughs> have the results. It's within five, five points in it, I think, from 23rd yeah. to 16th or something. It's absolutely mental. Um, I like it in one way, I hate it in another, I'm not going to lie. So I'll be I'll be watching other teams as well as as my own tomorrow evening. Um, I mean, I was on a podcast earlier on, and, and my, my my prediction was that I thought we would get a one-one. It'll be a tightly fought one-one with yourselves. I just don't see. First of all, we you know we're going into the game with possibly a weakened defence. You know, we, we're in a position where we had uh, Deion Sanderson sent off at the weekend. I don't think there's been any sort of argument to, to the decision. So that's going to stand and that's that's uh, ultimately a, a three-game ban, I believe. So he's going to be out. But then it depends on how we set up as to, to how things will will go. I'll stick with my 1-1, but I think it will be close. Um, that's, where my, that's where my head is. My heart always is going to say I'd love us to come away with a 1-0 and a scrappy one that come off somebody's backside mm. in the last minute, you know. But... It's it's just, I think at the moment you're on you're on a really good run. You've got that opportunity to 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 maintain the the playoff spot that you're in, and you know all the teams at the top at the moment, they're all capable of beating. In fact, arguably in the league, everybody's capable of beating each other. But I just I just see a draw. Like yeah, the, I mean a draw this... a draw is a very safe bet for us, especially at home. We're we're a better side away than we are at home, but. Um, we we still don't tend to lose many at home. I mean, I say that we lost to Swansea and then drew to um, who did we drop to last time out? But we 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 we're on a decent run at the minute. Like I say, we've we've only lost one in eight. I feel like the the new signings are starting to pick up that understanding now and that bit of match fitness, especially Cavalio. 
um and when when you mix all of them together it, it creates you know a, a, a bit of a nightmare for for a lot of defenses and i feel like sometimes when you've got attacking fullbacks in the back of their minds and maybe the manager's mind when he's setting up in his his side it's mm. it's a case of do i want them to push so far up when i know the wingers that they've got on the counter attack and it sometimes makes managers double guess themselves it will be really really interesting to see how birmingham set up because if 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 you come and play risky then it will be a very entertaining game but we'd prefer that but if you came and sat back then that's probably your best way of getting result against us because we really struggle to yeah. break teams down so yeah it, it, we'll just have to see how we both set up but you know a, a draw would be a, a, a probably the safest bet to go for uh, I just think that the minute Rosini is really drilling into these players that's that they've got an opportunity to finish in the top six and we've got to nail that position down and they'll they'll be yeah, highlighting games some. Yeah, especially yeah, the home game. He knows the home games after turn around. Yeah, and momentum is the key, and it always is going into those those final few games of the season, especially when it's the playoffs, because you always have one team that gets in there that's on that run of form that going into it, and then it tends to be the others. I won't say they take the fight off the pedal, but actually you tend to look at third and fourth in the league, and arguably sometimes fifth, depending on how close it is. But they do they do slow down. And it's that that team that goes in with the momentum will be the ones that that do it. So, hey, look, I'm looking forward as always to to a good game. Uh, as I said, my head says one one, my heart says a cheeky one nil. Um, but we'll we'll only know after that final whistle tomorrow evening. So, thank you first of all for for joining me and giving us your view on the on the game. Um, it's going to be a great one. Look forward to it. As always, as a sign-off, I will say to you, as I do with everybody else, thank you very much and keep your eyes on.